Hello. In the previous video, we covered the basic infrastructure setup for building an indicator, including the process definition and part of the product definition. In this video, we will briefly refer to the calculation and data building procedures, review the indicator's code and advance with the record definition. Remember, this video series focuses on the process of building an indicator and teaches you the different steps you need to take to accomplish the mission. It is not a complete class going through every definition and concept as those are covered in the docs. If you haven't read the data mines documentation yet, it's recommended you go through the data mining workflow and decoding the indicator's logic pages before watching the rest of the video. So, this is where we left off in the previous video. We have our process defined and we have the partial definition of the MACD product with its two dataset definitions. We'll proceed by adding the missing items using the button in the menu of the product definition node. This is how you get the nodes corresponding to the data calculations procedure and the data building procedure. As you may have learned from the docs, the data building procedure is where the core logic of the indicator is programmed. On the other hand, the calculations procedure deals with accessory information, mostly simple calculations corresponding to information that doesn't need to be stored but that is still useful and is made available to others in the form of calculated properties. This is the code we will use for the data building procedure. It starts with the code corresponding to the procedure initialization, which is run once at the moment the indicator starts processing. We'll get back to this bit in a minute. Here's the code that does the actual calculations, the one we will use in the procedure loop. Let's quickly go through the code, highlighting some of the lessons you may have learned from the documentation. This is the formula we will use to calculate the EMAs that make up the MACD line and the breakdown of the variables used. Remember that the candles product of the candles volumes indicator is our main data dependency. Actually, it's the only dependency we have defined. So, this is how we assign the main dependency to the candles object we will use to calculate the EMAs. This is the calculate EMA function implementing the EMA formula. As you can see, it takes the number of periods, the current price and the previous EMA as parameters. Now, if we go back to the initialization code, you may see why we are initializing these variables to zero, so that the value of the previous EMA is not undefined for the first candle. And this is how we assign the results of the calculations to the variable object. In particular, to the properties to be defined in the record definition. So, we have EMA12 and EMA26, the standard setting for the MACD indicator. We may now calculate the MACD line using simple arithmetic and store the line property in the variable object. The signal line is the EMA of the MACD line, so we use a function similar to the one we used before to calculate it and we store the signal property into the variable object. And finally, the histogram is simple arithmetic too. So, let's go ahead and paste each section of the code in the corresponding JavaScript code nodes of the procedure initialization and the procedure loop of the data building procedure. We're not going to use the calculations procedure at this point, so we may as well delete the nodes to clear up the design space. We could have used the calculations procedure, for example, to identify convergence and divergence of the lines, or the crossing of the center line in either direction. Now that our code is in place, 
we may proceed with the record definition, as we already know the properties that make up this product. The first two properties should always be the begin and end date time of the record. So let's label the first property and check the configuration. Begin is the best code name too, and because this is a numeric field, we will leave false as the value for the isString parameter. The isCalculated parameter is also false, as the property originates in the data building procedure. It would be true only if it originated in the calculations procedure. Now that the property is defined, we need to assign it a value. We do that by adding a formula from the menu. In this case, the value of the formula is record current begin. That is, we will assign the same datetime value as the corresponding record in the main dependency, which is stored in the record object. That is how we define a property in the record and assign it a value. The value may come from one of the dependencies or from either of the procedures available. I will now do the same for the end property. Now, I'll proceed with the definitions of the properties that make up the indicator. The first will be the line, which is also not a string and not a calculated property. Actually, all of the properties in this indicator are numeric and not calculated. For the formula, I will use the object variable and the line property, just like it was defined in the code. The definitions of the rest of the properties follow pretty much the same reasoning, so I will take care of those in a breeze. That's it, we're done. The indicator is ready and it's time to test it. To do that, we need to set up a data mining task with an instance of the bot so that we can put it to run and see the results. And that is exactly what we will do in the next video. <laughs>